let, let's seek God, eternal God, our Father in heaven. We love you so, so much. We thank you, God, for the privilege and the pleasure to be able to come into your strong and powerful presence to once again give you the praise, honor, and glory that you so richly and rightly deserve. You are great and greatly to be praised. Your name is above all names. Yes. And we thank you, God, yes, Jesus. for allowing us to see this day, yes. to wake up, to make our way to the church. We praise and bless your holy name for those who are on the conference call and those who are watching via a lot of Facebook Live. And God, uh, we just magnify you on today. We thank you for every form of provision, protection you've covered and kept us this week. God, while others have gone home, gone to glory or to their eternity in mass numbers, yes. you have kept us. Yes. And God, we thank you for life, health and strength, the activity of our limbs. And God, as we gather this morning for your Sunday school, we dedicate it to you. We dare not even attempt to try to go forward without asking you to fill us with your Holy Spirit to bless us and anoint us, to forgive us of our sins, to create in us clean hearts, O oh God. Yes. Renew a right spirit within us that we can continue doing your holy and righteous will. Yes. God, we pray and ask in the name of Jesus, not just for Partakers Church and members, but for every church door that is open in your name, yes. every church that is online, every preacher, every pastor, every proclaimer, everyone who's been called to gather around your throne to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, I pray for those who are on the front lines, the medical workers, the healthcare workers, God, those who work in municipal positions. We pray for our government. We pray, God, for everybody who blankets the earth. We pray that you will put an end to this COVID-19, this virus, God, that has put this earth in a panic, that has taken so many lives, God, we pray that by your blood, as you continue to cover us, that you would bring it to an end. Yes. God, we pray for righteousness to rule and we pray for wickedness to cease. Yes. We put it all in your hand. Yes. Everyone who's sick and shut in, shut out. Yes. Everyone who desires to be in your church building, everyone listening to me in this voice, God, this feeble voice that you've given me. Yes. Now, thank you, God. Thank you. Now, bless us through your word. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Injustice will be punished. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We ain't getting away with nothing. <laughs> I could end the Sunday school lesson right there. Amen. Uh, when you look at the disparities, as it even relates to our government, how even with this recent stimulus that so many of you are glad of celebrating, uh, when you look at those who are in a higher uh, uh, income bracket, the millionaires and billionaires, how they got all of this money, already having money, while those who are at the bottom of the pole are barely getting anything. I consider it a great injustice yes. when only a particular few are looked out for, yes. while the remainders, well, while those who remain are cast aside. But we need not worry, yes. because God is a God of justice, and he will make sure that his children are taken care of regardless of the situation. Injustice, you don't have to worry about those who have mistreated you, those who have done you wrong. God is gonna show us through this lesson who vengeance really belongs to. He has the patent on revenge, yeah. amen. amen. And so by the eight, our aim for changes by the end of this lesson, we will explicate the story of Esther as a triumph of justice we will sense that treachery and wickedness will not win and choose to act justly in every situation with the assurance that good triumphs over evil. Amen. Yes. Sometimes it takes a long time, but eventually God shows up on behalf of his children. The in focus uh, story is in church. Why does it have to be in church? <laughs> Could it be that that's where a lot of injustice <laughs> takes place? That's right. In church, James and Mariah were leading the adult class discussion on why fighting injustice takes a willingness to take a stand even when you are afraid. After this discussion, Mariah spoke about God's love for justice. 
Then she reviewed Esther's heroic deeds and James shared how Esther was a reluctant hero, but eventually changed her mind to stand up for her people. He added how Mordecai's instructions to his cousin slash daughter Esther and his determination for justice provided the catalyst to help save the Jewish people. They reminded the class that Mordecai and Esther literally changed the course of history. Amen. Amen. Then they asked the class to identify historical figures that represented risk takers and freedom fighters. Class members named persons like Fannie Lou Hamer, Mary McLeod Bethune, and Frederick Douglass. Next, they asked the class to reflect on the sentence on the board which stated, and I quote, when you look over your life, how many instances can you recall that you stood up for justice? Mm -hmm. Especially when it was in a very stressful situation. How many times Lord Jesus. can you say you stood, not only stood up, yes. but spoke up yes. for that which was right yes. in the midst of blatant wrong? The class gave different responses about marches they had organized and participated in. And after, the, after this discussion, James and Mariah asked the class to find three scriptures during the week which encouraged them to stand up for justice. Question is asked, how do you stand up for God's justice? Do you allow wrong to take place right before you and say nothing because you want to play it safe? Or are you willing to take the risk that because you are willing to stand up for justice, that some may not like you, some may walk away from you, some may even attack your character? Mm -hmm. Let's look at the example. And then we're told to identify when you, <laughs> when you did not stand up. <laughs> Amen. Our keep in mind scripture comes from Esther chapter 7 verse 10. The King James Version would say, so they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Mm. Hey, mm. I can shout on that by mm. myself. Mm. Then was the king's wrath pacified. According to the people, places, and times, the book of Esther, in the Jewish community, the book of Esther is read every year during the festival of Purim, which commemorates this story. Internally, the book of Esther does not mention God's name in any of its ten chapters. God is not seen or heard to offer direct guidance to anyone. When Esther calls for a period of fasting, no direct reference to prayer is made. Even though it was canonized with the rest of the scripture during the middle of the first millennium A.D., the first Christian commentary on the book of Esther did not appear until the ninth century. Consequently, the lesson reads, some in the Christian community have critically questioned the book of Esther's use for revealing the nature of God. These concerns, however, have not dampened the book's capacity to encourage Christian believers to defend what is morally right. Could, it, could God's name not be mentioned because the assumption is that God's people already have that type of relationship to where it means more to live for God than to speak of God. Because in living for God, you're automatically a witness. Amen. Amen. The background is here in this passage, we find Esther making her plea and request to King Xerxes, also called Ahasuerus. The story of Esther began in 483 B.C., which was the 103 years after Nebuchadnezzar took the Jewish people into captivity. Mordecai's family went into exile from Jerusalem because of Nebuchadnezzar. Even after King Cyrus allowed them to return, many Jews stayed and lived in Persia because they experienced great freedom. Xerxes was the fifth king of Persia, the kingdom that overthrew and ruled much of the same territory as Babylonia. And during that time, was considered a dominant force to be reckoned with both in wealth and in influence. 
Lesson reads that at the beginning of Esther's story, Vashti visits, I'm sorry, Vashti was Xerxes' queen. And because of her perceived disobedience to the king, she was banished. Xerxes sought to look for a new queen who was both young and a virgin. Esther's family had chosen to stay in Persia, and as such, Esther was considered the queen and ultimately given the title because of her beauty and charm. As the queen, Esther kept her background as a Jew a secret. She was given very few rights as a queen, and because of her, because of the behavior of Vashti in particular, there was a weariness to relinquish any rights to her. However, she would ultimately be, one, be the one to save Mordecai from death because he refused to bow down or kneel to Haman, the highest official in the king's court. Haman's ancestors, the Amalekites, were a long time ancient enemy of the Jews and they were warned to blot out the name of Amalek from under heaven. And although Jews did not or Jews did show honor and reverence to the government officials. Hear me well, church folk. Although they did honor and reverence the government officials, Mordecai could not extend that same honor to Haman. Mm. Many of us are making decisions now based on what the government is doing and we're sticking to our claims. I just find it a little funny that uh, those of us in Christendom who were slow to obey the government because there was uncertainty and, and inconsistency concerning their claims as it relates to this virus. Uh, when they say it closed, some of us fought the closure because we weren't gonna follow them. And now we're defending them. <laughs> that they're saying now they're gonna uh, relax the restrictions and allow some of us to open, we're gonna disobey again and say, no, we're staying at home. <laughs> I just encourage you, follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because with the inconsistency of the government, and yes, we're called to honor and submit, but that is as they are in the Lord's will. Yes. We are not called to follow and honor wicked leadership. Amen. 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 The Bible always overrules. Amen. Amen. And so, as a result, Haman plotted to kill Mordecai and all the Jews, which is why Esther found herself pleading with King Xerxes to reverse the decree to kill all Jews. The question is asked, and many of us need to be challenged with this question, how might Esther have felt bearing the weight of saving the lives of herself, family, and people? And if you're connected to God, there ought to be a weight on you Amen. to make sure that salvation has reached those who are closest to you. Amen. Your family, your friends, yourself. It has two points, Esther's petition and Haman's demise. In Esther's petition, we see Esther chapter 7, verses 1 through 6, which reads, So the king and Haman came to banquet with Esther the queen. And the king said again unto Esther on the second day at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition, Queen Esther? And it shall be granted thee. And what is thy request? And it shall be performed even to the half of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Then Esther the queen answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition and my people at my request. Thank you, God. For we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. But if we had been sold for bondmen and bondwomen, I had held my tongue, although the enemy could not countervail the king's damage. Then the king Ahasuerus answered and said unto Esther the queen, who is he, and where is he, that does presume in his heart to do so? And Esther said, the adversary, you got to call it what it is, Amen. an enemy is this wicked Haman. <laughs> then Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. <laughs> I think one of the problems 
we're so we're so afraid to bring to offend people that we don't call wicked people what they they wicked. He was Amen. wicked. He was wicked. Yes. <laughs> I just felt like I had the holiday. Yes. Amen. Right. It just wasn't a mistake. It wasn't bad judgment. He was wicked, and she called it what it was. That's right. That's right. Esther, the lesson teaches us. <laughs> Esther teaches us, she hosted two banquets and invited the king to bring Haman to each. Esther 7 records the events of the second banquet and Esther's hopes of pleading with the king to save the lives of her people and Mordecai. But it was not an easy task standing up for what's right when all seems to be against you is not easy. It's hard. So hard that some will always choose the safe space because it relieves them of the responsibility and the accountability that they should have in executing judgment or justice and standing up for what is right. Esther understood that she had minimal rights as a queen. And just because you have minimal rights does not mean you have no rights. Amen. You've got to work with what you got. The text does not mention the name of God. However, it assumes that in her fasting, it was God who had covered her and she prepared herself to ask the king her request. Mm -hmm. Esther was going up against not only the power of the king's decree, but also Haman, the most powerful noble in the land. Haman had a direct hatred against Jews. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, when he entered the banquet of the queen, he was unaware of her identity as a Jewish woman. The king had already proclaimed that he was both willing to hear and approve her request, which is evident that God had honored the prayer and fasting to provide her with favor from the king even before she made her request known. Mm, mm, mm. He already knows what we need before we even ask. The king boldly states, what is your petition? It will be given to you. Hallelujah. Esther requests that the king save her people from annihilation and make the case that if her people were sold into slavery, that she would have kept quiet. She emphasized, this is not because the Jewish people have offended the government, but because the hatred and prejudice of one man is the potential cause of their destruction. If that don't sound familiar, <laughs> I have to deny my blackness, and I'm blacker than black. I'm like black, y'all. Amen. One man in a position of power and authority can ruin a people. The question is asked, what strategy did Esther formulate in her approach to the king and how was that important in her achieving her outcome to save her people? Esther exhibited a, a level of faith, so much so that she was willing to make the statement, look, if I die as a result, and if I perish, mm -hmm. let me perish. Mm -hmm. This is such a powerful statement that she made because even within recent days, I'm reminded of the pastor in Richmond, the bishop, and God rest his soul and comfort his family, who decided to continue having church service yes. and eventually passed away yes. from the COVID virus. Mm -hmm. After he had to receive scorn and ridicule, not only from the world, but from those within the kingdom, mm -hmm. from other pastors and other preachers who had opinions, who called him foolish, who called him stupid, who called him idiot. Mm -hmm. These were preachers, some I know. And the question just welled up in my spirit, how many of us are willing to die for our convictions? Lord Jesus. Hmm. As to say, if I perish, let, let me perish. perish. Yes. Because I'm convicted. I've got a conviction from God that means that if my approaching the king means my ultimate death, my calling would have been fulfilled. Mm -hmm. I would have gone in faith yeah. and done what I believe yeah. the Lord had put on my heart to do. She didn't consult anybody. As a matter of fact, she was convinced by her uncle that she should go. So you never know a person's personal conviction. So I encourage you, 
Shut your mouth when it comes to the decisions that others are making concerning their personal convictions as it relates to carrying out their faith call. She had a conviction. Amen. She knew that, hey, this could go either way. But just because it could doesn't mean that I'm not going to do anything. Most of us would just settle in the same place as we said earlier. Well, if, it, if it's going to threaten my life, then maybe I'll back off. Or maybe I'll send someone who's braver than me and get with the crowd and call them a fool if it don't work out. Trusting God sometimes means getting into the deep water while everyone else wants to stay on the shallow part and shout and pray. So this was her petition. She wanted to save herself and her people and was willing to risk it all. What are you willing to risk? What are you willing to risk for the sake of your people? Lord have mercy. Haman's demise, verses 7 through 10. The Bible says that the king, arising from the banquet of wine in his wrath, went into the palace garden, and Haman stood up to make requests for his life to Esther the queen. For he saw that there was evil determined against him by the king. Then the king returned out of the palace garden into the place of the banquet of wine, and Haman was fallen upon the bed whereon Esther was. Then said the king, Will he force the queen also before me in the house? As the word went out of the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. In Harbona, one of the chamberlains said before the king, Behold, also the gallows, fifty cubits high, which Haman had made for Mordecai, who also, or who spoken good for the king, standeth in the house of Haman. <laughs> then the king said, Hang, <laughs> hang him thereon. So they hanged Haman on the gallow that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. You better be careful. I could get up and shout and dance right now. Because the same traps that people make to destroy you are the same traps that they'll have to fall in and die in. Hallelujah. The same gallows that they were going to hang him in that he was going to hang Mordecai in, he ended up hanging from. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So mm -hmm. you ought to be able to celebrate those yes. who, uh, those henchmen that, the, that Satan sends, the devil sends your way mm -hmm. to end your life or to discourage you or to get you off of your square yes. or to yes. cause you to turn away from God, those people who are coming after you literally mm -hmm. and who have the dug ditches and some have dug graves and some have made gallows hoping that you hang from them. God will turn it around and make the same folk. Yes. Amen. You can go and say, I'm a witness. You can type, I'm a witness, if you are a witness. God will deal with your enemies, I promise. Yes, yes. Yes, he will. Says, once the king realizes what Haman had done, he becomes outraged. The king in his anger walks to the garden to cool off and comes to the realization that Haman fooled him. Good God Almighty. Yes. <laughs> now, those who are in leadership or those who are decision makers, you've even got to be careful of the counsel you receive. Yes. Because folk yes. will come to you and lie and cause you to make decisions that you will later on regret. Ooh. All right. I just said something bless myself. Yeah. <laughs> and some the couple of y'all in here who look at yeah. me, y'all act like y'all can read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> he Haman fooled him, told him all this stuff, got him to sign a decree, only to find out that it was done based on a lie. Lord have mercy. The sad thing about it is that there are those, some of you who may be watching, who have made decisions based on lies you were told, and when you discovered it was a lie, you still didn't go back and try to make it right. <laughs> Haman 
is a frame as what, I'm sorry, as what was at one point a banquet of joy quickly turned into terror as he realized that he was in the line of judgment. Talk to us, Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Haman, a once proud noble, found himself at the foot of the woman he wished to destroy. <laughs> the roles were now reversed. God's rule declares that those who choose to persecute God's chosen ones will ultimately become beholden to them, meaning that those who choose to harm God's chosen will actually be the ones that harm will come to. As Haman pleads for his life, the king enters more enraged, and the king's servant quickly covered Haman's face. It was practiced to cover the face of the one who was condemned to death because the Persian kings refused to look at them. The king then orders that the pole Haman had built to be the demise of Mordecai should become the measure by which his own life is taken. Haman's prejudice and hatred are what led to his destruction. Mordecai is now given the position of honor and Haman the execution. <laughs> uh, Y'all gonna have to celebrate me. Yeah. God, when God make decide Brother Johnson to execute judgment, is some of y'all on this conference call line, has God ever been that type of God for you? Amen. Hmm. Now, the uh, liberating lesson, Lord, let me just do, we got a few minutes, let's do this, discuss the meaning. Why was it essential for Esther to prepare the king's heart through fasting for her petition? Because we have to accept the reality that in our humanity, we are limited as it relates to our ability to influence decision makers. The heart of the king is in the Lord's hand. And not that we use, hear me, not that we're called to use fasting to manipulate God. Because many people do. You can't make God do what you want him to do just by calling a fast. Amen. But God stands behind his justice he stands behind his righteousness. And to fast is to empty of yourself your ability to confront and trust in a power that only God can provide to make things happen. She knew that just going to him based on the emotion may not net the same result. She had to fast. God, you've got to show me. What, first of all, you've got to show me when it's the proper time to show up. Mm -hmm. And after I've shown up, you've got to show me when the proper time is to speak up. Yeah. Because just because you're there don't mean it's time to talk. Mm -hmm. All right. Fast and you give God, you surrender completely to the will of God to orchestrate the situation. Yes. How does Esther describe the plot against Mordecai and the Jews? It's right there in verse 4. She says, for we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain and to perish. But if we had been sold for bondmen and bondswomen, I had held my tongue, although the enemy could not countervail the king's damage. She says, look, at a point, yeah, I decided I wasn't going to say nothing, even though I knew what was going to happen. She literally said, even though I was one of the marked people, I was now in a position where they didn't know I was a Jew, so I could have easily just looked out for myself. <laughs> and some do. Mm -hmm. They're with you until they get promoted. Amen. Come on, we know folk. Amen. Yeah, they, they, they'll lead the march, they'll lead the protest until the ones they're protesting against invite them in and give them a position. <laughs> then all of a sudden, that which they were part of, they're now fighting against. She had to describe what was happening in order for the king to be, in order to soften the king's heart and to get him to understand what was being plotted against them. Where does the idea of the method of Haman's death come from? And why is it important? Simple as this. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. Yes, yes. Now, 
This is the struggle that we have. Because it takes discipline to not strike back at your strikers. Mm -hmm. It takes a trust in God's justice in order to just do your part and trust him with, with that which is above you. She clearly, uh, you know, uh, she was clearly at a disadvantage based on what the previous queen had done. He was already apprehensive about even letting her in his space, but fasting, praying, created a favor that God used to get her in the presence of the king to state her claim. And I encourage each and every one of us, look, before you jump up in somebody's face, before you really, before you make any decision. Make sure it is the Lord who's leading you because we have made some decisions based on an emotion that will change. We have made permanent decisions on temporary situations that we now regret. I encourage you, my brother, my sister, if you're looking or if you're listening, consult the Holy Spirit before you jump into anything. And don't make decisions when you're emotional, when you're afraid, when you're anxious. But take that pause, that Selah moment, mm -hmm. and say, speak to my heart, God, yes. and show me what you want me to do. Yes. Yes. In the Discuss the Meaning, um, well, actually, I did the search the scriptures, too. Why does it seem, why does it seem just that Haman was put to death with the same pole that he had initially designed to kill Mordecai on? I would say, yeah. Why? Because this was you. This was a weapon that you meant for evil against one of God's elect. Mm -hmm. And God has the right to turn around and use the same weapon against you. Have you ever found yourself in Esther's position? Having to speak for the dignity of a person or group of people mm -hmm. that you witnessed being wrongfully persecuted by those in authority? Have you ever had to speak up? For someone who was done wrong, yes. Yes. Lord have mercy. Yes. Yes. The liberating lesson is in our world today, many people find themselves persecuted, marginalized, and oppressed because of their race, immigration status, and position in society. We are desperately in need of individuals who will stand up to modern day Haman's who wish to destroy the well-being of others. If we look closely at our elected officials, we know that those who come from marginalized communities have had to fight to get a seat at the table. When they finally get to the table, they feel a responsibility to speak and advocate on behalf of their respective communities. Unfortunately, there are systems and individuals that wish to tarnish our democratic process by doing everything in their power to stop change from coming to fruition. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, the efforts, spirit, heart, and convictions of those who seek liberation and hope are able to call attention to the social ills in this country. It is our job as a community to continue uplifting voices who speak out against unjust practices to keep them in our prayers, and when called upon to also use our privilege and voice to uplift the silenced voices in the world. Amen. Got to say something. You know, it is, it is even more dreadful and more harmful to keep quiet in the midst of injustice. I believe God will have to, those will have to stand before God and when he asks, how come I have given you what to say? And you choose to stay safe and be quiet. Yeah. Because you would rather be received and accepted and acknowledged by people who were against him mm -hmm. than to speak up for him. Mm -hmm. Our application for activation. As you find yourself witnessing the continued marginalization of individuals in this country, seek out and support organizations using their platform to elevate and alleviate the plight of, of the marginalized. Secondly, continue praying for and voting. Hmm. 
Amen. Y'all know that's a pet peeve. Amen. You talk about all this injustice and you ain't cast one vote. Shut up. Amen. Get in that line and wait as long as it takes to cast your vote. Then you can talk. Amen. 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 Vote. Yeah. Vote. Amen. Amen. As a matter of fact, go on and say vote. 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 Type in vote. Amen. You got to vote. Amen. Who you and voting for elected officials who will attempt not to harm and oppress the least of these, but will establish and fight for policies that will make their lives better. And I encourage you, before you cast your vote, we've got access to information unlike any time before. Mm -hmm. You can look up the track record of the people you're considering. That's right. Because we, especially black folk, we done failed for the okie doke so many times mm -hmm. that we would put elected officials in office only to have them become part of the problem or the pre-existing problem because they go in with good intentions. But they are forced to compromise in order to get a few things done. Uh, how many politicians, and I know I'm getting off, uh, off the train for a minute, but let me just say this. Think of the history of the politicians who started off with the right motives. Who started off for the people. But then they got caught up in greed and power. Mm -hmm. These corporations who offered them money in order to do things in their communities and how uh, you, you serve a four year term and never got to work again. Mm -hmm. You start off making nothing and you leave a millionaire. Mm -hmm. Hello, yeah. Because you've been taking payoffs and favors. Mm -hmm. You've forgotten the people. Mm -hmm. We're going to say his name, amen. <laughs> Look at the politicians who represent you. That's right. Look how they started and where they are, and look where you are. Yeah, that's right. That's right. The promises that they made to cover you and to keep you and to work for you and to fight for you, and you're doing worse after the end of their term than you were before they started. My Lord. Let the Lord lead you. Lastly, through here we go through prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. Bring all your cares and worries regarding how people are treated to God. And trust that God will bring forth justice and righteousness. Yes. Yes. You've got to trust God. Yes. Injustice yes. will blanket the earth until Jesus comes back. Yes. Yes. Question is for us, are we willing to stand up to it in the name of Jesus, trusting that he will back us along with all of heaven and all of heaven's resources? Or do we cower down under the pressure? Do we fold in order to remain light and popular? Mm -hmm. You and I have both witnessed and lived through and have taken part of injustice and unjust things, may have even participated. My Lord. Mm -hmm. And you know the pain that comes as a result of those who've been marginalized. Mm -hmm. You know the devastation those, uh, uh, those uh, that some have had to endure when the power steps on the powerless without regard. Mm -hmm. You've been in situations where you saw wrong, mm -hmm. you heard it, mm -hmm. and you said nothing. All right. mm -hmm. I was blessed, and I might be telling on them, so I ain't gonna use no name, but y'all know how sensitive I am when it comes to preachers, me being a preacher. Mm -hmm. So I can't stand when I hear another preacher or anybody say anything, even if it's true. Mm -hmm. And I noticed yesterday that there were some who were mocking a preacher. Uh, I guess he had done a, a, a eulogy and they were mocking how he had done it. It had taken too long and they were talking about, uh, you know, I guess his delivery and how people were uh, bored and wasn't paying attention. And my friend and brother mm -hmm. stepped in there and just told this person, stay in your lane. Right <laughs> right. I was so glad because right. mm -hmm. I wanted to say something, but it wasn't going to be that kind. But I was so glad to see another preacher step in. That's he may right. have not even known the preacher, but to step in right. when others are being talked about and mocked. Mm -hmm. How can anyone in Christian mm -hmm. make a mockery or joke or ridicule openly and on social media about someone that you may not prefer? Amen. If you stay in your lane, look, Amen. everybody's not cheering for you. Amen. That's right. But still do what you can with a Holy Ghost conviction. 
and let God be responsible for the results. I promise. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Yes. Wait on God and be of good courage. He'll strengthen your heart. Yes. He will carry forth his justice to everyone who has treated you in an unfair fashion. Mm -hmm. But listen, you got to let him do it. Yes. Sometimes without your help. And then you got to let him do it. And only do the part that he instructs you to do. Mm -hmm. I pray that you were blessed by this Sunday school lesson. We're going to close out in prayer so that we can get ready for our worship service. Amen. If the Lord has moved upon you to sow into this ministry, you can go to givelify.com. Look up Partakers Church Baptist of Detroit. Hit that donate button and give whatever amount the Lord places on your heart for a Sunday school offering. You can go to Zale at pcb.trustee at gmail.com and sow a seed as well. Or you can mail it to 2550 South Lindensdale Street, Detroit, Michigan, 48217. Either way, we thank God for you, we bless God for you, and we'll continue to lift you up in prayer. Let us go to God. Eternal God, our Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much for this time of Sunday school and sharing. Jesus, thank you. We pray for the challenge and the conviction that comes from your word as we have been Call to stand up for that which is right, even in the face of death. Yes. God, we thank you for the strength and wisdom that you have shown us through your servant Esther. Yes. God, who thought it not robbery to be selfish and settle in her position of power, but to look back and consider the fate of her people. Yes. To take the risk. God, I pray that you would raise up risk takers. In this season, God, who see and witness injustice and who don't just sit idly and silently at the sidelines, but speak up for that which isn't right. Yes. God, we pray that you forgive us for the times when we had the opportunity to speak up, but we failed to do so. And then, God, I pray that you would strengthen us that when the next opportunity comes up, that your Holy Spirit will well up in us yes. and not let us rest until we do that which is right in your sight. Bless everyone who's here on the conference call, Facebook Live, the, those who are in the sanctuary, God. Bless us, cover us, and keep us. Yes, God. Let your word saturate our spirits. Bless the offering that has been received. We pray, God, that you would take this offering, that you would multiply it, and that it be used for your kingdom and to your glory. Yes. Then, God, over and above the amount, bless the heart of the giver is our prayer. In your darling son, Jesus' name.